this um, landscape is a bit out of my comfort zone. Um, there's no wildlife to speak of up here. Um, it's cold and I'm not really a one for climbing mountains because they're there. Um, but the Climb for Climate Action team has come up here to the top of Kilimanjaro um, to make a point. These glaciers are disappearing. Uh, when I first flew over Kilimanjaro in the mid-1980s, uh, much of this summit was covered with glaciers and they're going. And this has become a beacon for climate change. And it doesn't just affect the people that live around here. It isn't just that there's an iconic image of Africa, Kilimanjaro with the, the, the snowy glaciers on the summit is disappearing. It's, it's symbolic of what's happening all over. Um, if we don't reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, if we don't protect the tropical forests and the animals that live in them so that they can continue to regulate our climate and, and generate yeah, rainfall for us, then not only will the glaciers go, but so will much of the rainfall in Sub-Saharan Af Sub Sub -Saharan Africa. The, the climate models suggest that if um, average global temperatures rise by three or four degrees, much of Sub-Saharan Africa will be arid and the people around here who depend on glacier-fed rivers for their agriculture, for their drinking water, won't be getting any because the rain won't be falling. So climate change is something which affects everyone and every species on the planet. So if by climbing Kilimanjaro at a time when we, the window of opportunity for changing that nightmare scenario is gradually closing, but if we act now we can change it, if we can draw people's attention to that, then that's what this is all about. It affects us, it affects the great apes and the elephants, and it affects everyone on the planet. So climate action has to be now, not sometime vaguely in the future when we get around to it.